Mike Mansfield was among the few American political leaders of his time who recognized China's re-emerging importance on the world stage. In May 1922, as a 19-year-old Marine, he was briefly deployed to China. This exposure led to an intense personal interest and eventual study of Asia. Leaving the military for work in the copper mines of Butte, Montana, Mansfield was encouraged by his wife, Maureen Hayes Mansfield, to earn his high school equivalency and degree in Far Eastern history at the University of Montana. In 1937, Mansfield began teaching about Asia at the university. Mansfield's political career began in 1942 when he was elected to the U.S. House of Representatives. As a junior congressman, Mansfield won President Roosevelt's approval for an official trip to China in late 1944, where he met Chiang Kai-shek and other top officials. Mansfield believed that a strong China was in America's interest and pushed for aid to the country. Mansfield supported the U.S. policy of containing communism. As Senate Majority Leader, however, he privately advised President Johnson not to seek a military victory in Vietnam, realizing that Communist leader Ho Chi Minh had mobilized the power of nationalism, the most powerful force in post-World War II Asia. President Nixon ended more than 20 years of economic and political isolation between China and the U.S. in February 1972. The new era of peaceful relations would not have been possible without Mike Mansfield, who provided important support for the opening. Following a three-week official visit with Senate Minority Leader Hugh Scott in April and May 1972, Mansfield stressed the positive aspects of China's economic and social growth. Overlooking the devastation of the ongoing cultural revolution, Mansfield concluded that China, quote, has become a viable modern society with an approach to social participation and responsibility, which is rooted in the past, meets the needs of the present, and offers a soundly based hope for the future. As the longest serving U.S. ambassador to Japan under Presidents Carter and Reagan, Mansfield continued to have a strong interest in China. He watched as Deng Xiaoping launched reform and opening to the world until the Tiananmen Massacre of June 4, 1989, crushed hopes for political reform. In 1999, veteran Washington Post journalist David Broder referred to Mansfield as the man who may be the greatest living American. That description fit the modest statesman who rose from poverty to international acclaim while continuing to faithfully serve the citizens of Montana and the nation. His death on October 5th, 2001, came just two months before China joined the World Trade Organization, a giant step towards becoming a global power. Mansfield's far-sighted vision of a world in which the U.S. and China could peaceably coexist and mutually benefit guides us as we seek to cooperate with China to solve environmental, economic, and geopolitical issues, while we in the U.S work to maintain democratic institutions and universal human values that China's current leaders both reject and renounce.